Hello everyone, this is Tiepan. The last round and the decisive round of the candidates tournament is underway. Uh, the situation on the scoreboard couldn't be more complicated and Caruana is in first before last, last round with 8 points out of 13 rounds and Sergei Karyakin and Shakri Armamedyarov are trailing just behind with 7.5, only half a point less which means that all three could still win the tournaments. The game I'm going to go over in this in this video was played between two players who haven't been having the best tournament of their lives. Levan Aronian uh, had white against Wesley So, and Levan was at only 4 out of 13 before this round, so just about 30%, which is unbelievably bad considering how strong he really is. And Wesley So was at 5.5, which is almost 50%, but not enough to stand a chance for first place. And this means that their game was almost exhibitional. What was, good, what was good about it is that we got a lesson in asymmetrical English since almost 90% of the, of the game was complete theory mainline. Levon opened the game with pawn to c4, the English opening, and Wesley goes for the solid symmetrical variation with c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, knight to c3, both sides are solidifying the center before pushing d or the e pawn, g6, preparing to fianchetto his kingside bishop, e3, knight to f6, and now d4, when it's prepared, the knight on f3 and the, the e3 moves were preparing, preparing d4, c takes d4, e takes d4, and d5. And this is a thematic move, d5 has to be played by black if he wants to keep relative equality in the position, and because of this pawn push, white is almost forced to accept an isolated queen's pawn position, because taking is by far the best move, he can't allow d takes c, it wouldn't be as good. And now c takes d5, knight takes d5, and queen to b3. And after queen to b3, this is similar to some Grunfeld positions, and white, black doesn't have anything better to do to do but to take, uh, take the knight on c3, because his knight is now attacked twice, so he takes, and white will be able to support his d pawn with b takes c, but before he recaptures, Levin plays a nice theoretical tactical move, bishop to c4. And now there is two moves black can respond with. First of all, uh, trying to save the knight with knight to e4, which is the only square where it isn't attacked or attacked twice. Then white would have uh, bishop takes f7 with check, king to d7, queen to d5, and knight to d6 trying to block the king. And the material would be better for black, but white is just crushing him here, and black wouldn't be able to survive for long, or at, or at least he would have to give some material back. For example, knight to e5, king to c7, knight takes c6, b takes c6, and the king is too unsafe, and white is able to play bishop to f4, or even bishop to d2, and bishop to a5, threatening the queen, and just improve his position. And the fact that black has some material, some extra material, doesn't mean anything, because his rook on h8 will never get into the game, his queen is blocked and passive, etc, etc. After bishop to c4, another move uh, that black could have considered uh, was knight to a5, trying to disrupt the queen and the, and the bishop uh, for the moment and attack the queen, but white would have bishop takes f7 once again with check, so no time to take the queen. King d7, queen to e6 check, king c7, bishop f4, this is just completely lost because black has to give up the queen in this position. Uh, the move that is commonly played after bishop to c4, uh, which does work, is knight to d5, which immediately gives the piece back instead of just allowing white to take it on c3, and white is forced to take, otherwise black will save the piece with d6. So now after bishop takes d5 and d6, uh, this way white at least still has uh, an isolated queen spawn, and black didn't repair his pawn structure. But after bishop to c4, uh, Wesley played e6, which is the second most common move, just blocking the attack on f7 and saving the, saving the f7 pawn. And actually, this position after bishop to c4 is still very theoretical, and there is over 300, 400 games from this position, and in 250 games, uh, in more than 250 games, uh, bishop uh, knight to d5 was played and e6 was played in about 80 games. So Wesley chose the second most common continuation. After e6, now Aronian recaptured the knight with b takes c3. And now Wesley is actually threatening knight to a5 in this position, forking queen and bishop. But it won't work as long as white is able to check on b5, gaining a tempo and saving one of the pieces. So he first covers the diagonal with bishop to d7. But Levin knows his theory too, so he retreats with bishop to e2. 
to make sure knight a5 doesn't work. Wesley plays it anyway, queen to c2. And now bishop to g7, fianchettoing, bishop to a3, now preventing black from castling. And in this position they go they go for a repetition. Even though this is still theory, there is still some play, uh, some games in the live book from this position. So bishop to f8, bishop to b2, they decline a trade and just repeat moves. And on move 17 they resigned. Uh, they, I'm sorry, they agreed to a draw, they didn't resign. I don't know what to say except that I feel terribly sorry for both of them because of how bad they did at the candidates and I'm sure it must be just crashing psychologically. And there could have been a million reasons for, for such a poor performance, especially for Levin having such a poor score and Wesley actually did okay. And I don't know what it was, but I hope both Levin and Wesley can learn from can learn a lot from these 14 games and not dwell on the result too much. Because they are both definitely going to be competing again in two years and they are still in top 10 in the world and they are still amazing players, but perhaps they just need some more mental stamina and I'm sure that tournaments such as this one, which are so crucial and which can get you to challenge Magnus for the, for the world title and there is nothing greater in chess than that, than becoming the world champion create immense pressure on your on your mind and starting off badly in the tournament can just destroy you for the rest of the games and I think that happened to, to Aronian. He had a solid start and then just continued to play horribly until the end of the tournament and lost most of his games and Wesley actually started with two losses then then drew one game and he was back and forth back and forth for the for the entire tournament and never really stood the chance to compete for the first place so knowing that the first place is the only thing that matters and never having a chance to get there is i think too crushing psychologically for for you to be able to function normally but let's hope they can pick themselves up have a great uh, year or actually 18 months and then start again and win the candidates next time okay everybody thanks very much for watching stay tuned for the rest of the games from round 14 and more chess analysis cheers bye